Uh, so this is going to require a lot of typing. I'm just going to yell at you. Is can everyone hear me? Yeah. All right. Uh, so, uh, hi, I'm Zach. I write a lot of questionable libraries. Um, <laughs> uh, some of these include something that adds local mutable variables. Another thing that hijacks the reader to do whole code transformation. Uh, the one that I'm showing you here, just because it lets me show you something uh, rather than just code, is something called Automath. Oh yes. Is that good? No? More? All right. So uh, this is a white collar library. It does uh, <laughs> finite state automata. Um, is everyone here familiar with finite state machines, finite state automata? Yes? All right, great. So typically what this looks like is something of a mapping of state onto input onto new state, right? Uh, one side effect of this, though, is that we actually need to explicitly name all the states which is kind of a pain, especially when we have something that looks a little bit more like a regular expression. We have a lot of things which is like, did we get an A, or A or B, or something like this. And so uh, it also becomes really hard for us to compose these together, because there's not really a clear linkage, and it's not clear if uh, a state which is named the same in two different machines is the same or not. And so it actually ends up being a lot more straightforward to describe state machines in terms of inputs, and leave the uh, states to be sort of implicit, to be anonymous. And so uh, this is an approach which is used by Regal, which some of you may be familiar with. This is how many of the Ruby and other HTTP servers are defined. It's just a way to kind of deal with streams of inputs. So uh, this is, is that? That's visible. OK, great. So this is a diagram of finite state automata. It takes three inputs, one, then two, then three. The uh, empty state here is the beginning. Uh, with a double circle, it is an accept state. This means that we're done, that we've hit what we want to. So that's really simple. Um, we can do something a little bit more complicated. So uh, this sort of default way of dealing with this is always concatenation, right? Uh, any two of these things will just go ahead and get concatenated together, but we can do something a little bit more complicated. Uh, in the let's see. Uh, in the automat.core, there's a lot of uh, names which sort of shadow what's in closure. So we can do something like this, which accepts either 1, 2, and 3, or 1 and 3. And you can see here again that underneath the covers, there's some things which are trying to sort of jam these together and minimize them. Um, this is sort of less, uh, not, not particularly fancy, but we can also do stuff which uh, resembles what you can do in a uh, regular expression. So this here defines a plus, a question mark, and a star, which does more or less what you expect. It's one or more, uh, zero or one, or zero or more. And again, this gives us there. It takes one one, uh, an arbitrary number of ones, possibly a two, and then an arbitrary number of threes. So uh, these are all very trivial examples, but you can see how uh, these are all sort of composable, right? We're able to deal with these as just data, and we don't need to define a DSL or anything else like that. It's just a bunch of functions sort of coming together. Um, so uh, that's all very nice. The other sort of thing here, though, is we want to be able to deal with actual volumes of data. And so I've put a lot of work into trying to make this fast. And the way that we do that is we uh, compile it down. And oops. so I can do this, and it creates something which doesn't look like much. But uh, if we view this, um, it also actually looks exactly the same. But uh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, once upon a time that actually showed numbers for the states. But the idea here is that this is something which you can now pass a sequence of inputs, but also an input stream, or a byte buffer, or a byte array. And it takes about five nanoseconds to process each one of these. That means that you can take about 100 million inputs, that is 100 megabytes, give or take, uh, and process that in 500 milliseconds. So this is fast in Java land, probably not competitive with a handwritten C. Uh, compiler, but that's how long do I have? Okay, 47. Okay, so one thing that I'll actually mention here just quickly is um, you do actually want to uh, be able to have stuff that's going on here. You don't want to just sort of read in the, uh, the stream and say, okay, it started here and ended here. So what we can do is again, sort of taking a page from Regal's book, we can define a state. And this is done doing, uh, by the dollar sign operator. And what this is, is this is just a name that denotes this is a state. And later, when compiling it, we can say this state uh, maps onto this action. And so there's a, uh, a way where we basically are able to take a, uh, a value and reduce through it. Uh, and so each of these things is a function on the sort of 
intermediate states that we're going through. And so this allows us to, for instance, uh, conj onto a list all the inputs that we've seen. It allows us to count things, allows us to create, like pull headers out of an HTTP stream, whatever. And uh, again, it's sort of just all purely functional. Um, this obviously makes it slightly slower than five nanos, but uh, you know, this is something that we can only do at the certain places within the stream that we need to do it, so we sort of minimize that performance loss. So anyway, that's it, thank you. <laughs> uh, any questions? How do you use it? Uh, we don't. <laughs> uh, th this is something that I'm building because uh, I wrote something called Gloss about three years ago, which does sort of arbitrary byte stream uh, non-blocking sort of decoding of frames. It's not particularly fast. It's not particularly well written. Um, and so I want to go through and make it better. And this is sort of a fundamental building block. All right, thank you.